in this insta lecture number 99 my key of target or objective or aim would be to explain the concept of target cells now target cells i i am sure you have read in while reading about the thalassemia or reading about iron deficiency anemia obstructive liver disease or hemoglobin c disease in all these diseases we actually get on the peripheral blood smear the presence of target cells now what we usually do while studying that we usually try to remember a list a table that this these are the conditions which are associated with presence of target cells what i try to do in this session that i try to explain that why target cells are seen and if you understand that you can actually reproduce that table on your own you can figure it out on your own that which conditions are associated with target cells so our primary target in this insta lecture number 99 would be to explain what is target cell why target cells are seen which conditions are associated with target cells and what is their significance the presence as i mentioned that basically in all those conditions the target cells are seen that is dictated by simple logic the logic is the alteration in a ratio of the rbc the ratio of surface area by volume if this ratio is altered actually that causes uh, presence of target cell which i will be explaining in shortly on the in the white board but before that what is basically a target cell uh, target cell is a poikilocyte target cell is an abnormally shaped rbc it's also known as codocyte because code means bell so uh, 3d appearance actually these cells they actually look like bell but when we prepare a peripheral blood smear on the cross section they have a target like appearance that is bull's eye or target like appearance so i would go on the board and explain this that why they are called target cell and i would also explain the concept that why uh, these target cells are seen so let's try to understand what is target cell so normally if you look at an rbc uh, on the peripheral blood smear i'm talking about you will be seeing that there is a central area one third there will be area of central pallor i am writing is at cp central pallor but in these cells this target cell they have a different appearance so what i would be seeing in this kind of cells that at the central area of the central pallor that means central pallor is this area in that in center of that central pallor there would be some hemoglobinized area some dot like this bull's eye like appearance then there would be a non hemoglobinized area basically that is the central pallor and then again at the end i would be getting at the periphery there would be again hemoglobinized area so this gives a kind of bull's eye target appearance so that's why we call it target cell now question is this that why this target cells are seen and as i mentioned you that you need to understand there is a simple logic behind that this logic is this is dictated by this ratio of the rbc the ratio is surface area sa by volume v if this ratio is increased that causes redundant or excess cell membrane and that alteration in the biomechanics of the cells that causes the cells they appear like target cells on the peripheral blood smear due to the excess cell membrane which is present so the basic principle which you need to understand that the presence of target cells are seen due to alteration or increase in the ratio of the surface area by volume ratio and if you understand this principle it should not be very difficult for you to figure it out which conditions would be associated with target cell so any condition where your surface areas are increase or any condition which is associated with decrease in the volume of the rbc that would result in increase of this ratio and also increase in redundant cell membrane so let us clear this thing and try to understand this concept again that which conditions would be associated i'll try to simplify this so as i mentioned you that the key is this ratio surface area by 
SM means surface area divided by volume. This ratio is the key. This ratio is the key to form target cell. So if we think that which conditions are associated with increased surface area or those conditions which are actually decreased volume, that would result in higher of value of this ratio and that would cause excess redundant cell membrane and that would cause formation of the target cell. So now it's become very simple actually. There are two things possible, A and B, which can cause the formation of the target cell. One, A, is that, that if there is an increase in the surface area of the RBC, and B, if there is a decrease in the volume of the RBC. Now think logically, let's start with which conditions could cause, uh, which conditions could cause decrease, and let me start with B, which conditions can cause the decrease in the volume of the RBC, any conditions. So these conditions usually where we get microcytic hypochromic anemia, where there's a less hemoglobin that can be placed actually, uh, particularly thalassemia, and also in iron deficiency anemia. Now why, I think you can explain that, why thalassemia in the thal or in IDA, this, is seen. I think you have read in your textbooks or you have seen even on the peripheral blood span that a lot of target cells are seen in the peripheral blood span of the thalassemia and also seen in iron deficiency. The concept is very simple. In thalassemia, the main problem is no globin synthesis, genetically inherited disorder. Now, if there is no globin, there is no hemoglobin. If there is no hemoglobin, then there is let, less amount of hemoglobin to be put inside the RBC. And as I already mentioned many times, think RBC just as a simple biological cell which has filled with some hemoglobin. So if the hemoglobin is less amount of hemoglobin is put inside that bag, obviously the cell size would shrink. And obviously the volume of the cell would also shrink in the thalassemia and also in LDA. So obviously now you know that in these conditions, what is happening? that the volumes is decreasing, decrease volume. So if there is a decrease in the volume, what would happen to this ratio, surface area by volume? Obviously this ratio would increase. So there would be relatively excess membrane now would be there. And obviously that would result in the formation of uh, this target cell or cotocyte. Now look at the other option, that increase in surface area of RBC. It has been seen that there are certain conditions like obstructive liver disease. Obstructive liver disease. They can have increased surface area. The concept is, is this, this thing actually that in obstructive liver disease due to the presence of excess bile salt, more amount of cholesterol gets included in the cell membrane area of the RBC. RBC, you know the cell membrane is, uh, lipid bilayer cell membrane is there actually. So obviously there's more amount of cholesterol is there in that cell membrane in the obstructive liver disease that causes excess cell membrane area, excess surface area. Obviously this ratio is altered, goes in the favor of the surface area ratio. And that causes redundant or excess cell membrane causing the presence of, uh, Target cells. So target cells are, and also the same thing would, uh, could also be seen in the splenectomy. Uh, because splenectomy, uh, it has been seen that after splenectomy, spleen basically causes kind of splenic conditioning that they usually remove the excess amount of the cell membrane of the RPCs. So after splenectomy, it has been seen that they can be presence of the target cells. Because the same problem that the excess surface area of the due to the excess surface area by volume ratio because there is excess amount of cell membrane that could be seen. And other conditions where also a lot of target cells are seen is hemoglobin C disease, which is a variant of hemoglobin actually in the uh, sixth position of the beta chain, there's a mutation occur. And 
the glutamic acid goes and lysine comes. So that is uh, hemoglobin C and that could also cause presence of this target cell. And in all these conditions, actually the relative ratio of the surface area of a volume, which I mentioned, would be again altered and go in the favor of higher surface area by volume ratio that would be relatively excess maintained. So uh, this is all in a nutshell that what are the causes, what are the conditions we'll be seeing the target cells. So target cells, now I think you can understand, would be seen in thalassemia and also antibiotic anemia. Because thalassemia and antibiotic anemia, the problem is same actually. Thalassemia, there is no globin, so no hemoglobin, so less amount of hemoglobin is put inside the cell, so volume of the cell shrinks, it becomes microcytic. Identification anemia, there is globin, but there's no iron. So obviously no iron, no heme, so again, no hemoglobin. So obviously less amount of hemoglobin to be put inside that bag. <clears throat> and obviously that would mean that the cell side would shrink. And obviously this ratio would be again, higher surface area by volume ratio. And other condition where that is predominantly leading to uh, increased surface area, uh, that could also cause this, this thing like obstructive liver disease I mentioned, or uh, splenectomy and all these conditions would be seen. Uh, then uh, the next thing I would like to just in a brief that, uh, I would like to show in this board that what is basically why it is called cortocyte because if you look at 3D appearance of this cell, basically, the 3D appearance of cell, if I draw, they have the kind of bell-like appearance. These cortocytes. So there will be a central area, there will be some hemoglobin. At the periphery area, there will be some hemoglobin. and they look like a bell appearance. Some people call Mexican hat appearance. A lot of names are there. And if you see this thing on 2D, two dimension, well, on the peripheral blood smear, the cell basically look like this. Because this I am seeing on 3D appearance. This is a 3D structure, a bell cell structure. Because obviously RBC is 3D structure. But when you're looking at peripheral blood smear, we're basically seeing a cross-section appearance actually. So this is the center hemoglobin. Then there are no area of hemoglobin. And again, at the periphery, there is area of the hemoglobin. So this giving the appearance of the target cell. So what we learned in a nut cell that what is a target cell? Target is, is an abnormally shaped RBC. It's a poikilocyte. And Poikilo means some kind of variable like poikilothermic animal. I think you have heard that they cannot control the internal temperature. Uh, then that, that is a root of word actually, poikilo. And poikilo, it's a poikilocyte abnormally, shaped RBC. Usually it's also known as codocyte because they're bell shaped on the 3D structure, three dimensional structure. And they actually also known as Mexican head cell, hat cell because they do this appearance as I mentioned. Basically, they have a, in the central pallor area, they have a hemoglobinized area at the center, then non-hemoglobinized area of the central pallor, again some hemoglobinized area. So overall, they look like some kind of bullseye appearance of the shooting. That's why they're called uh, target cell, and also known as codocyte, as I mentioned. There are a lot of conditions which would be associated with target cells. Uh, as I mentioned, it could be thalassemia, it could be hemoglobin C disease, it could be also hemoglobin E disease, it could be uh, postplanectomy, and also could be obstructive liver disease. And basically their presence, they are dictated by a simple logic, which I mentioned, that increased surface area by volume ratio, which is causing relatively excess membrane. So this ratio could be altered if there is less volume in those conditions when there is some defect problem in the production of the hemoglobin, like uh, thalassemia or in some cases of antideficiency anemia. So on both the cases you can see <coughs> target cell and also it is be seen in obstructive liver disease or post conditions. And in those conditions that's the key idea is simple that there is a relatively excess cell membrane is there which is giving this appearance of the target cell. So thank you very much for attending this 99th Insta lecture session. Have a nice weekend.